Hello, uh, my name is Matt Steele. I'm working as a data scientist here for HCL Urban Code, uh, developing the Urban Code Velocity product. So there are a number of important metrics which help provide insight into the operating state and the efficiency of a software development value stream. Um, tracking these metrics uh, can provide a better understanding of the processes, help us to diagnose and solve uh, as well as prevent inefficiencies in the software development value stream um, and help facilitate a better and more accurate communication with um, the consumers of the end products of a software development value stream. Two of these metrics which I'd like to discuss today are the lead time and cycle time metrics. Lead time is a measure of the time until uh, value is delivered from an idea by a value stream, and cycle time is the amount of time which value is actively added to an idea in the value stream. So to take a, a deeper dive into things, uh, lead time is essentially the measurement between two endpoints. Um, uh, the initial endpoint is when an idea is accepted into a value stream as a work item. And the final endpoint is when value is delivered to a customer from that endpoint. And so essentially when we recognize an idea as being um, useful enough to do work on, and when we realize some value from the end product that is developed, delivered by that work item. In describing the lead time, we have to first start off with the, defining those two endpoints, which um, can be um, somewhat nuanced. When do we decide an, an item has been accepted and uh, when is it considered completed? When is it delivering value to our customers? Lead time is helpful um, both for strategic planning, so when we have an idea of how long it takes to deliver value from an idea, then we know how to budget our time accordingly to deliver um, specific items, feature requests, bug fixes on time, um, and allows us to provide um, complete and accurate communication with our customers so they know when they can expect given outcomes from uh, our uh, software development value streams. Traditionally, lead time has been somewhat hard to measure because it does define or does depend on these specified endpoints of when we're defining acceptance and when we're defining completion. In the software development land, different segments of the value stream have traditionally been defined by different processes. We have a development process, we have a design process, we have a deploy process. The, the times associated with a given uh, work item are not necessarily tracked by the same tool. So just doing the simple subtraction of when taking the completion time from the beginning time is non-trivial because those two timestamps live in different places and so it can be hard to, um, to calculate what the, the lead time actually is. We calculate lead time on an individual work item basis. We can only talk about when an item was started and when it was completed, but it's most useful when described in aggregate. When we're not talking about the lead time of a work item, but talking about the lead time that our value stream, stream takes to process uh, an item from beginning to end. Additionally, uh, lead time is a lagging indicator because part of the definition is the timestamp at which an item is completed. We don't know what the lead time of an item or what the trending lead time of a value stream is until after a number of value, uh, items have been completed. One final consideration with lead time is that lead time is a metric that displays seasonality. Um, so the lead time uh, of a value stream will change depending on what part of your software development cadence or rhythm you're in. Uh, whether that rhythm is uh, due to release cycles, whether it's due to sprint cycles, um, the lead time will naturally vary over the course of that cadence. And so when making comparisons of lead times, we need to either compare like times to like times, so the beginning of a sprint to the end of the sprint, or I mean, excuse me, the beginning of one sprint to the, the beginning of the next sprint, or average over 
the entire cadence. The same way that um, other seasonal metrics like um, unemployment rates are described as seasonally adjusted unemployment rates to balance out the effects of um, natural variation over a cycle. Cycle time is similar to lead time in a lot of respects, but it measures a different part of the value stream. So when we talk about um, cycle time, we're talking about the amount of time that is uh, put in to actively adding value to a work item. So the amount of time we're working on an item. Um, it also has two defined endpoints. Uh, it shares one of those endpoints with lead time. That's the completion time, when, when a work item begins to realize values for uh, the consumer of the products of the value stream. The start point is different for cycle time because that's not, it is not an acceptance of the work item um, as in lead time, but the beginning point of the cycle time is when work actually begins on the item. Because of this, definition, this difference in starting point definitions, uh, there are different use cases for cycle time, right? Whereas uh, lead time is helpful for doing strategic planning, uh, cycle time is more useful for a tactical planning. If we're planning out um, a specific release, for example, uh, we know how long it takes to going from the beginning of um, working on an item to when we expect value to be realized by that item by looking at the historical record of the cycle time. Cycle time is also helpful in uh, understanding and monitoring the software development process um, because it tells about the amount of time that is uh, actively goes into working on each item. We can monitor that to see if our time is getting longer, uh, maybe inefficiencies are creeping into the process, or if it's getting shorter, maybe we're getting more efficient processes or um, maybe we're dropping the ball somewhere. So that gives us a cycle time gives us an insight into the uh, software development processes that uh, imprint themselves um, on time durations. Similar to lead time, uh, cycle time is measured on the individual work item basis, um, but it's most useful in aggregate when we talk about uh, the average cycle time of work items incorporated in a release, for example, or the average cycle time of all the items we've completed in the last quarter. Similar to lead time, it also um, displays um, some seasonality that we have to be aware of. So again, when comparing two cycle times, we need to make sure that they're making comparisons of the, either um, the same uh, portion of the software development cycle or um, being averaged over uh, a complete cycle. So that's lead time and cycle time, two very important um, time metrics that are similar in a lot of ways. They both measure the amount of time that um, we spend working on items. One of them is good for um, strategic planning because it tells us how long it takes to realize value from a work item uh, from the time we accept it as an idea. The other tells us about the amount of time that we're actually adding value to the work item, the amount of time that we're actually doing work on it. Um, so hopefully by tracking and monitoring these two metrics, you can get a better understanding of your software development um, value stream um, and be able to communicate more effectively with the consumers of the products of your value stream.